Hello, everyone. Welcome to my playlist, uh, Python Drills, where we'll learn how to solve real world Python problems. And uh, let's set up everything before we dive into our first drill. Our objective is to uh, directly diving into learning Python without going into too many details uh, of documentation, uh, but we'll learn everything on the way, on the fly, while doing the coding itself. And uh, we also want to solve practical problems related to Python. Uh, which topics we'll cover? Well, uh, practically everything uh, that's needed to build your foundation on Python from object and data structures, operators and statements, methods and functions and object-oriented programming to advanced topics. And uh, in the later lectures, we'll also try to cover some projects. As resources, uh, there are tons of online documentations on Python, but I think there should be at least one or two uh, good books or references uh, at your disposal. Uh, with regards to these, uh, Eric Mathis, uh, Python Crash Course, and Paul Barry's, uh, Paul Barry's Head First Python would be uh, two very good uh, books to start with. And as platform, uh, I will use Jupyter Notebook because it's really easy to use and very versatile uh, with regards to uh, debug and check your code and you can uh, install it really easily uh, through Anaconda 3. Uh, uh, just a disclaimer, any other text editor or compiler will do, as long as you can run the code. And uh, how do you utilize this playlist or this course on Python drills? My suggestion is to categorize a problem, uh, that is to realize uh, which section of Python it belongs to. Uh, is it a list problem? Is it an array problem? Is it a function or a particular method problem? You should realize that. And if you uh, feel uh, that you are stuck or is too advanced for uh, your expertise or your level, uh, you should go through the documentation. And I suggest that you should go through an easier problem first and then come back later. And uh, as, uh, as it is a programming language course, uh, practice uh, will make you better. So that's kind of the setup of this playlist. Let's start coding in Python. I'll see you in the first turn. Welcome to the first drill. The problem statement is that in a string, we have to print out the words that start with an S, uh, start with the letter S. Uh, just a disclaimer, as this is the first video, in order to use the Jupyter Notebook, you have to click at the upper right corner when the software opens, and then you have to select new Python 3. Then you will get the coding block to start coding. So this is a problem statement. Here, uh, let's say we have uh, a string uh, called my string. Uh, the statement here is the sun rises in the morning, it is a beautiful sunny day, and we have to find out the words that start with an S. Uh, you can see that there are two words, uh, sun and sunny here, and uh, we have to find out those. Uh, in order to find out the words, we have to split the string into words, and for that we can use the uh, split utility of Python. For example, and the uh, if we want to go through the whole uh, string, we have to run a for loop so that it runs through uh, the whole string. And uh, we have to use indexing to find out uh, the first index of every word to check if it, uh, if it is uh, a capital S or a small s. So let's start writing. Uh, for word, let's say uh, we are just giving a random name for the variable word in my string and we have to use the split utility and uh, we will use a conditional here if uh, the first index you know the python indexing starts uh, at zero or well, we just uh, don't want to be fooled uh, if it's a capitalized s instead of uh, uh, a small s. Uh, we don't want to return anything, rather we want to print the word. And uh, let's see if it runs. 
you can see that it works. Uh, it is showing those two words and it has captured both capital S and small s. So it's a very introductory and very easy uh, problem to solve with Python. And you, uh, you can learn how to uh, use a for loop to go through a string and how to use an if conditional to find out uh, a specific uh, condition uh, if it is fulfilled. And uh, at last, you, you know how to print uh, that output according to your uh, for loop and, and if conditional. So I'll see you in the next drill. Thanks. Hello and welcome to the second drill. Here our problem statement is that we have to go through a string and print something uh, or print the word uh, when it finds a word with even number of letters. So uh, for example, we're uh, trying to go through this string uh, which uh, has this text. Uh, we're trying to find words with even number of letters and we're trying to print out those words which have uh, even number of letters. For example, we or trying or to. Uh, let's say uh, how we can do this. Uh, again, we have to uh, first split the uh, string into words by using the split keyword. And then uh, we have to go through uh, the whole string uh, by running a for loop. And then uh, if uh, our, uh, if the length of each word um, is uh, even, then we will uh, print only those uh, words. For example, let's start the for loop or let's say word in the string and we are applying the split feature. Uh, and then we're using the if conditional, if the, uh, we're using the len keyword, uh, that is length of the word. And uh, we're trying to divide it by two. And if the remainder is zero, then we'll print the, word. So it seems like it works when you run it uh, by uh, pressing control plus enter. We try to, for making it more obvious, let's uh, shorten the string by keeping just two words uh, with one, one word with even letters, uh, even number of letters and another one with odd number of letters. If we run it, it is showing we, so it works. So that's how we're using the for loop, the if conditional, and uh, two features. One is a split, and uh, another one is the len. Uh, so that's a very easy way to go to a string and uh, find out uh, if any uh, word has even number of letters or odd number of letters. So uh, that's it for the drill. Uh, I'll see you in the next one. Thanks. Hello and welcome to Python drill number three. I uh, hear the problem statement is the popular one. Uh, it's called FizzBuzz, which you can find in many online platforms. Here we have to go through a list of numbers. Uh, we have to go through uh, integers from one to hundred and we have to print them. Uh, except if uh, any number is a multiple of three, we have to print fizz. If it's a multiple of five, we have to print buzz. And if it's both, that is, uh, it is, it is a multiple of both three and five, we have to print fizz buzz. So uh, you uh, can already feel that it's a conditional problem and uh, we have to run a for loop through uh, integers one to 100. And uh, write uh, the conditionals uh, for fee, for printing fees or buzz or fees buzz. So let's start with the for with the for loop. Let's say for number in just to go through uh, one uh, to one hundred, we have to include uh, up until one hundred and one, as the upper limit is not included in the Python range. And the first conditional will be uh, for the fees buzz. Let's say uh, if three, five, 
or bought, it will be multiple. So these buzz. And then we have an elif condition. Um, we'll check for only three. Then there comes another elif condition where we'll check for multiple of only five. And the only thing remaining is the other numbers that we have to print. Uh, all right, let's see if it works. It's uh, showing an error because num is not defined. Uh, I can see the error for num in range. Now it should recognize, yeah, it looks like it works that is printing fees uh, when it comes to three, it prints buzz. When it comes to five, it is printing again fees when it comes to six. And uh, it is printing fees buzz uh, when it comes to uh, 15. Uh, so uh, to make it more obvious, let's run it for this range. And it looks like uh, it also works for a short, shorter range and if you can uh, actually run it for uh, any range or whatsoever. So uh, that's uh, an uh, easy and convenient way to solve this uh, very popular feasible problem. So that's it for the drill. I'll see you in the next one. Thanks. Hello and welcome to the fourth drill. Here the problem statement is that we have to create a list which will contain the first letter of every word in a string. And here our given string is uh, the text which says this is my string. Again we'll use the split feature and uh, we'll use a for loop to go through uh, the whole string but we'll use list comprehension uh, to uh, facilitate our purpose. Uh, we will show a very sleek way uh, to solve the problem. For example, we can use dynamic coding, uh, which is allowed in Python. Our output will be a list. So inside the list, we can write the code itself. You know, uh, the first index of every word uh, we will, uh, we will be our output. So So we will use the for loop and we will uh, split the string inside the list and we will, uh, we will accumulate the word zero, that is the first index of every word after the string split. Let's say, what is the output? It is showing T-I-M-S, that is the first words uh, as, a, uh, as a list it's showing. So this is a very sleek and uh, simple way to write the word, but it may not seem a very clean way to write a code. Uh, so uh, for beginners, uh, this might not be a very convenient way to understand, but it's a very cool feature uh, called list comprehension that we can use to solve this kind of problems. So uh, that's it for the drill. I'll see you in the next one. Hello and welcome to the fifth drill. Here uh, we have to find all the even numbers in the list and at the end we have to return the even numbers. Let's say we have this list 1, 3, 5, 2, 5, 6. We have some of the even numbers and to accumulate the even numbers uh, we can actually declare another empty list first where we will accumulate all the even numbers that we, that we can find and we can use a function
which will call my list <coughs> and inside that function uh, we'll go through every number in my list and if it's uh, an even number it will uh, append that number to this empty list. Or else it will just pass, it will not do anything. And at the end, it will return the even list. Let's say, uh, let's check if it works. It uh, only returns two and six, just to make it more obvious. We can redefine my list and it shows that it works. So and that is how we can actually go through a list and accumulate the even numbers in another list. Hello and welcome to the sixth drill. Uh, we have to write a function that will take a two string, two word string, and it will return true if both words begin with the same letter. For example, here it's to string, uh, so it, uh, both the words uh, start with the same letter, so it should return true. If it's not, if it's to string, then it should return false. So let's start. We have to write a function, so it will call my string and take it as an input, and then we have to uh, split the string so that it can actually store uh, uh, store the two words that it contains. Now it's split, and we have to return. the we can use the double indexing technique we just have to uh, we don't have to go through all the letters in the word we just have to check the first letter so we're using double indexing so if test zero of zero is equal to test one of zero that means if the first index of the first letter is the same as the first index of the second letter, then we will return true. Otherwise, it will be false. So let's see if it works. Um, test, suppose. We have to use the split attribute. We have to use the split as attribute in the my string. And then uh, you can see that it's returning false because it starts with two different letters. Let's try if it starts with two same letters then it's returning true. So that's how we can check uh, if a two word string uh, contains uh, the same letter in both words. Hello and welcome to the seventh drill. We have to write a function that capitalizes the first and fourth letters of a name. So let's say that as a name, we have a string Washington, to make it more obvious, we're making a small letter. And we'll write a function. Let's say its name is cap, which will call the string. And uh, if its length is more than three,
then it will split the whole string into two segments uh, using the indexing. Uh, for example, the first part would be uh, from the first to third index, that is from 0, 1, and 2. Uh, for this purpose, we will use the first to three, the upper bound will be excluded. And we will use the capitalize uh, utility. And then we will add the rest of this. We'll start from three or else it will print something like too sharp. It doesn't show any error and let's say we have to use the capitalize twice because we have to capitalize both this portion and that portion. Now it's showing that the first and the fourth letters are capitalized. Um, let's check it for something smaller than four letter word to see. Now it's showing too short. So this code works. I'll see you in the next drill. Thank you. Hello and welcome to the eighth drill where we have to reverse the words in a sentence. Let's say we have a sentence, I have a name, and we have to reverse the words. That is, we should uh, have an output like name A have I. So for this, we have to write a function and uh, uh, it's calling the text, uh, this string. And we will use several features of Python to uh, facilitate this task. So we will return the join feature and we will uh, split the text into words and also reverse the order of the words. And when we call the function, we're getting name may have I, so let's make a space here. So this works as explanation. Here we have used several features. Uh, first, we have used the join features, uh, which joins the split texts uh, by something that you define. For example, we are joining the split texts, that is the words here, uh, by a space. And also we are reversing the order of the words. So first, uh, what comes into play here is that we're calling the text, we're reversing the order from the first word to, this, uh, to the last word into the reverse order uh, after doing the splitting. And then we're joining them back together by a space. So we're getting a space uh, in between each word. So uh, we can also try with another sentence. For example, if I test it with I run, I, getting, uh, I get run I. So that's how we can reverse the words in a sentence. Hello and welcome to the ninth drill. Here from a list of numbers, we have to find uh, whether there is a three next to a three somewhere. For example, here there isn't any uh, three next to a three. Uh, so we'll return false in this case, but if we have it, then we'll return true. So we can uh, write this code by calling a function, by writing a function, and it will call the list of the numbers and we'll run a for loop for the length of the uh, list. And if 
uh, we'll use indexing uh, to go through the list. If one index is three and the immediate next index is also three, we'll return true. Otherwise, we'll return false. Now, if we call the function, we're getting true because uh, there is a three next to a three here. Just to check, we're removing the three and checking again. And in this case, it returns false. So that's how we can find if there is a three next to a three, uh, if there is a specific number next to another specific number somewhere in a list of numbers. Hello and welcome to the 10th drill. Here we have to write a code that suffices as three conditions of the uh, card game Blackjack. The three conditions are that uh, in a, uh, within the three uh, integers, if the sum of the uh, if the sum of them uh, is less than or equal to twenty one, uh, you just return the sum. You just consider the sum of them, and if you exceed uh, their sum, uh, but if, uh, but there is an eleven. If you exceed twenty one uh, and there is an eleven uh, among the three integers, then you just reduce the sum by ten. And even if after that adjustment, uh, you exceed 21, then you are busted, you, you lose the game. So let's write those, th those three conditions by, uh, uh, by conditionals. Uh, so if the sum, uh, of a, b, and c, uh, our three numbers, our three integers, is smaller than or, or equal to 21, then we will return their sum as it is. The second condition is um, is that their sum exceeds uh, 21, but uh, definitely it, it will not exceed 31. And there is an 11 then we will reduce the sum by 10. And even if after adjustment we exceed 21, then we will just print bust. Let's see if it works. Uh, seven, three, five. Then we're just returning the sum. Uh, let's check the second condition. If we exceed, and there is an 11, then uh, we should get 21, but we're reducing it by 10. That is, that is we're getting 18 and we're still in the game. But if we exceed, then we'll print bust uh, the, and we'll lose the game. And that's how we can uh, fulfill the three conditions of Blackjack game through a Python code. Hello and welcome to the 11th drill. Here we have uh, an array of numbers and we have to return their sum, except we have to ignore a section containing six to the next nine. For example, here in this array, uh, we have several numbers and we have to return the sum, except we have to ignore this section from six to the next nine. So you should return two plus four plus two, that is eight. For this, we are uh, writing a function called skip69, which will call the array of the numbers. And to uh, make sure we're getting the sum, we are uh, defining a variable named total, which is initially zero. 
and we are defining a boolean which is add uh, which is initially true to make sure that we are uh, adding the numbers and we will change the value of the boolean uh, according to our need when it will face uh, the first six when it will come to the first six it will start skipping the number and then when it faces the next nine it will stop and start counting again so we'll run a for loop through the array while add meaning uh, while add is true if number is not uh, equals six we will uh, continue our uh, summing the numbers and then we'll break out of the loop that is we'll break out of the loop and go to uh, the initial for loop and else we will change uh, it to false that is it will no longer add the numbers We will also have to write another while uh, loop that, 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 it, that is meaning that while it's not adding, uh, it will have to wait until it faces a nine. If it doesn't face a nine, then it will just break or uh, it will change the value of the Boolean add back into true that is it will uh, start counting again and at the end we should return the total and let's run it and call the function it's showing eight that is that means that it's skipping the from six to nine uh, just to make it more obvious. Let's uh, make the array shorter. In this case, it should return two plus two is equal to four. Let's say, let's see if it works. Yeah, it's returning four. So that's how we can return the sum of numbers in an array, but ignore a section containing a specific number to uh, up until it faces another number. Hello and welcome to the 12th drill. Here we have to find uh, if one, two, and three, these three numbers are in order in a given array. So we have an array called nums and we have four elements in there, one, two, three, and four. So we have one, two, and three in order. Uh, so it should return three uh, if my reason function calls it. So we're writing a function called find order and it will call this array. And we'll go through each element to find out whether this is in order. One, two, and three are in order in this given array. So in order to find out that, well, we can make a template array uh, before we're running any loop. Uh, in this template array, we have one, two, and three, and just a random symbol. Uh, let's say it's X uh, to find out, to, to match one, two, and three. Uh, when we are going through the given array. So we will run a for loop. And if the number matches with the first element of our template array, then we will just pop off that number from the template array. We'll just pop it off. So when the first match is found, when uh, one is found in this array, it will just pop off one from this uh, array, the template array. So only two, three, and X will be remaining. And when a second match is found, uh, then it will pop off two. So only three and X will be remaining. And when all the three are matched, when three is found, then it will also be popped off 
and only x will be remaining. In other words, uh, the length of the template will be just one and will return true if the length is just one, meaning that we have already matched all the uh, numbers we're trying to match one, two, and three in order. So let's say if it, uh, let's check if it works. We'll call this function. And it's showing true uh, because one, two, and three are actually in order in this array. Uh, to make it more obvious, let's just make it not in order. Uh, we're skipping two, so now it should show false. And yes, it's showing false. So that's how we can find whether specific numbers are in order in a given array. Hello and welcome to the 13th drill. Here we have to find prime numbers up to and including a given number, say up to 50 or 100. We have to find all the prime numbers. So we're writing a function uh, called count prime. Uh, and it will call the given number, say 50 or 100 or whatever it is, up to which we're trying to uh, calculate how many prime numbers are there. And at the end, we want to return the list of the prime numbers. So we're uh, starting an initial array uh, where we will keep the prime numbers. And initially, as we know that two is a prime number, we're starting with two. And to count the numbers, uh, we're using a variable x equal to three as uh, we will try to run from three. Now we will uh, start with a while loop. Um, first, we have to make sure that uh, if we enter uh, a number that is smaller than two, uh, we should return zero. So let's say now we're returning something greater than two. Now the uh, main word actually begins. So we will uh, try to make sure that x is equal to uh, equal to or smaller than the num, our given num. Uh, we'll try to increase uh, the value of x from 3 to the given number. And we'll use another variable. Let's say uh, with another variable, we try to see uh, whether uh, that y uh, is in primes as we're accumulating in the list. And if it does not, uh, if it does not satisfy the definition of prime number, that is, uh, it is divisible by itself. Then we will just increase the value of x with two uh, because we want to skip the even numbers, and we will break out of this loop. And we will use the uh, facility of using a for else statement. And we will, uh, let's say it does actually satisfy the definition of prime number, then we will append uh, to the list of the prime numbers. And then Again, we have to uh, always keep the even numbers just to make it faster. And at the end of the day, uh, we have to return a list. Let's say we want to, we want to see whether we have been able to accumulate the, all the prime numbers. And also let's say, um, we want to see how many prime numbers are there. And just for check, let's check up to 50. This uh, is showing all the uh, prime numbers and it's also showing that there are 15 prime numbers up to 50. 
Uh, let's check with something simple just to be sure if we try with five, it will show two, three, and five, and three prime numbers are there. So that's how we can uh, calculate how many prime numbers up to and including a given number uh, by using uh, several tricks uh, inside a function. So uh, as a gist, we are uh, using uh, with an initial list uh, where we already contain two, and we're using uh, a variable x from three, and we're uh, increasing the value of the variable up to the given number, let's say 50 or 100, whether uh, whichever we want to test. And uh, at first we say that we will return zero if the input number is smaller than two, because uh, we will not find any prime number if it's smaller than two. And uh, if it's greater than two, then we'll uh, keep increasing the value of X up to the input number. And we will use the prime numbers that are accumulating in our array. And then we'll, uh, we'll also uh, try to satisfy the definition of the prime number. And, and if it doesn't, we'll just skip uh, the even numbers and break out of the loop. Otherwise, if it does satisfy the definition of prime number, we'll append to the list and do the, uh, and do the same. And at the end, we'll print all the prime numbers and return the length of the, of the list, uh, meaning how many prime numbers we have accumulated. Hello and welcome to the 14th drill. Here we have to return the unique elements of a list. For example, if I have a list where the elements are repeated, like here one is present three times and two is present two times, we just have to return the unique uh, elements of the list. So we will just a list that contains just one, 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 two, one, three, one, four, one, five, and so on and so forth. So for that, we're writing a function named myList, which will call this given list. And we will uh, start with an empty list called x, where with which we will match. And we will start with writing a for loop for for a in my list. So we'll we'll go through my list, and if a not in x, meaning that if uh, a is not yet present in x then we'll just append it. So when it goes through the list, it, it will find whether A is not in the X, that is our initially empty list. So whether if it's a, if it's a unique element, in that case, it will just collect it here and if it finds this element again, then it will not do it. And at the end, we'll just return the array uh, x where we are accumulating the unique elements. So let's see if it works. So it's actually returning the unique elements, one, two, five, three, four, seven, eight. So to make it more obvious, we can just do it for one element. Let's see if it works. Yeah, it's returned just one. So that's how we can find out the unique elements of a list. Hello and welcome to the 15th drill. Here we have to find whether a string is a palindrome. A palindrome is uh, something, something like a word or a sentence, where if you reverse the, the order of the letters, you get the exact same thing. For example, the word madam or race car or evil olive, something like that. So here we have a string, madam, 
and we have to find out whether it's a palindrome. As we know, it's a palindrome, it should return true. So for this, we'll just write a one-liner. We will just try to find a Boolean. Our only trick here is to check whether the normal indexing in my string is equal to the reverse indexing of my string. So let's check with our given string whether the function works. It's returning true. Just to make it more obvious, we're just manipulating the string so that it, it is not a palindrome. And now it's returning false. And that's how we can find whether a string is a palindrome or not. Let's say you want to find something containing a space like evil olive. To handle the spaces, we can just uh, use a replace function. where we'll replace the spaces with nothing. So the spaces will be obliterated and we can do this. Now it's returning true again. So that's how we can even uh, check this function with something containing an, a space. Hello and welcome to the 16th drill. We have to find whether a string is a pangram. A pangram is something that has all the letters of the alphabet. For example, the popular sentence, uh, quick brown fox jumps over the lazy dot. To do this, we'll use the string module. We'll import the string module first, and then we'll write a function, which will call our given string. And we define the alphabet as the string dot ASCII lowercase. That, that means that we're importing, we'll recognize all the ASCII code of the letters in the alphabet, and we make them lowercase, and we define them as alphabet. Now first, we'll do We'll make a set out of the alphabet, meaning that we're only uh, selecting the unique elements of the alphabet, meaning that we're only selecting the 26 letters in the alphabet. And then we'll start working with our given string. First, we have to get rid of all the spaces in the sentence so that it, uh, the problem becomes simplified. So we'll replace the space with nothing. And then we'll make a set out of it as well so that we have only the unique elements. We have the unique letters of the given string. And then we'll write a Boolean, a Boolean statement. whether our given string is equal to uh, the alphabet, the unique elements of the alphabet, the 26 letters. Now let's see if it works. It's showing true because it has all the 26 letters uh, of the alphabet. Just to make sure, let's get rid of one letter and run it again. It should show false now. Yes, so that's how we can actually find whether a string is a pangram or not. Hello and welcome to the 17th drill. Here we have to exchange the first and last character of a string. 
Let's say we have a string, hello, and we have to exchange the first and last characters of the string. So the output will be that H will be in the place of O and O will be in the place of H and the middle portion will be unaffected. So let's say to keep the middle portion unaffected, we will define middle as a portion, the middle portion of the string uh, by indexing. We are taking len of string minus one because the upper bound will not be uh, included according to the Python syntax and we'll return the last character of the string, then we'll return the middle portion and then we'll return the first character of the string. We're using indexing throughout the string. And let's say, let's see if it works. It's returning O, E, L, L, and H. So it has put O in the place of H and it has put H in the place of O, so it works to make it more obvious. Let's try it with Ola. So it should return Allo. So that's how it works. Hello and welcome to the 18th drill. Here we have to return every other character in a string. So if our string has four characters, we'll just return the first and the third one, and so on and so forth. So in order to do that, we're writing a function called myString, which will call the given string. And we'll start with an empty string called result, where we will accumulate the even numbered indexed characters. So for example, in terms of indexing, here in our given string, the index zero will be B, index two will be L and so on. So we'll write a for loop for this. So we'll run the for loop uh, for the length of the string and if we get an even numbered character, a character with an even numbered index, then we will collect it into the result string. And at the end, we will return our result. That is how many characters with even numbered index we have accumulated. Let's check if it works. It's returning B and L. So the first and the third characters is returning. In other words, it's returning the characters with index zero and two, the only the even numbered index. Let's check it with something else. If we check with the word check, it's returning C, E, and K as it should. So that's how we can return every other character in a string. Hello and welcome to the 19th drill. Here we have to return the first half of a string. For example, we have a string uh, which consists of the text sunshine, and we have to return only the first half of the string. For example, for this particular string, it will return only S-U-N-S, the first half of the string. So for that, we're, we're writing a function called return half, which will call the string, mm -hmm. and we'll write a one-liner by using the indexing in the string. And we'll start from the first, and we will go from length of the string and we will use the floor division to get the first half by dividing it with two. So let's see if it works. 
So it's returning sans. Just to make it more obvious, let's make it a two character string. Now we should return just the first character. You can see that uh, it only works for even numbered characters in a string. If it contains odd number of characters, let's see what happens. It will work according to the division, uh, according to the rule of lower division, and it will still return S as it didn't go to the second division, second available divisibility by two. And if it has four characters, it will define, it will return the first two characters. So uh, you, you will have to be very careful about the number of the characters that is available in the string to make it work perfectly. Hello and welcome to the 20th drill. Here we'll solve a very popular problem. We have to find if it is possible to make a wall of a defined length by using small bricks of given lengths. For example, we have two types of bricks. One is small and another one is big. The small ones are one inch long and the big ones are five inch long each. And we have to make a wall that is 100 inch long. So we have to find out whether we can use these available number of bricks. We have 10 number of small bricks and 10 numbers of 10 number of big bricks. And we have to reach the target of 60 inch of length of the wall. So we have to write a function for that named make wall, which will call the number of available bricks, small, big, and the target numbers that is 60 inch. And we'll try to find out whether it's possible to make it with the available number of bricks. So we'll use the process of elimination. We'll eliminate the impossible cases where it is not possible to make the wall by using the available bricks. And after all the conditions are eliminated, it will be possible to make the wall and it will return true. So let's see what conditions are here uh, so that we can eliminate the possibilities. The first one will be by an if condition. And we will have small bricks, the number of 10, we have 10 small bricks and the first condition is, is if we run out of small bricks to reach the target. We'll divide by five. We'll use mod five uh, because the number small, the number big is divisible by five. It's five inch long. So that's the first condition uh, that we have to eliminate. Another one is that we will use all the, we'll use up all the bricks, small and big combined, but we will not be able to reach the goal. For example, so we're using all the small bricks and also we're using all the big bricks, but if we are not able to reach the target, then it's not possible to make the wall by using this particular bricks, then we'll return false. Otherwise, we'll return true. Let's see if it's possible with this combination. It's showing true because obviously reaching uh, 60 inches of length for the wall by using uh, 10 large bricks and 10 small bricks. It's very easy because possibly we can use uh, five small bricks. It will be 50 inches and we'll use the, the rest 10 small bricks and we can easily reach, uh, we can easily reach the target length. But let's make an impossible case. Let's say we just have only one uh, big brick and only one small brick, and we are uh, trying to reach 60 inches. Obviously, it's not possible, so it should return false. So the logic is here in the if statement, we uh, eliminate all the impossible conditions. For example, 
we are eliminating first, uh, we're checking whether the number of available small breaks are smaller uh, than the smaller than the target mod five, that is the number with which the length of the big break is divisible. And the other obvious condition is that we'll use up all the small bricks and all the small, uh, all the big bricks combined, and we're still not be able to reach the target possibly because the target is uh, too long and we have very few number of bricks available. So that's how we can check. Uh, and, and that's how we can solve this very popular problem. And this can be of any format. For example, if we want to, uh, let's say we have only two available sets of lines with defined lengths, and we are trying to uh, make it to a given target length, or it can be posed in any other way. I have posed it here uh, in terms of uh, bricks and walls, uh, but this is a very popular interview kind of uh, problem where you are asked to solve whether this kind of combination is useful to make uh, or reach a target length. Hello and welcome to the 21st drill. Here we have to find how many times a character or, or a series of characters appear in a string. So our given string is hi, hello, hi, and let's say we want to find how many times hi appears in our string. So for that, we are defining a function called count character, which will call the string. And we, uh, just to make a count, uh, we are defining a variable called sum, on the initial value of which is zero. And uh, after that, we'll run a for loop uh, for i in range. For example, we'll run the for loop throughout the characters of the string. So we have to uh, run it uh, for the range of the upper bound is not included. to uh, subtract one from there. And we have to uh, use a conditional uh, I, I if statement uh, just to make sure we are going from the i index to the i plus two index. And we will equate it to the high. So in this for loop, we're using a high. and we will run it for this, for, string, uh, for the ith element of the string to the i plus two -th element of the string. And if it is equal to high, then we will just count it. And at the end, We'll return the sum just to see how many times high has appeared. Let's see if it works. It's showing two just to make it more obvious. Let's eliminate this one. Now it should show one. Yes. So that's how we can find out if a character or a series of characters, how many times it appears in a given string. Hello and welcome to the 22nd drill. Uh, here we have to find a number, whether if a number is next to another number in a given array. Uh, if you have come this far, congratulations, you are being consistent and you have already solved 22, uh, 21 drills and this is your 22nd drill. So you are ma really making progress. And so our problem is that we have to find whether a number two appears next to another two in our given array. Our given array is called nums, where we have uh, several numbers. And you can see that there is a two next to a two. So it should return true. So we have defined a function called find two and two, which will call the array. And here we will uh, go through the array indexes 
and we will run a for loop or i in the range of these length of the nums minus one as the upper upper bound is not included in python and then if the ith index is equal to two and the next index is also two only then we'll return true otherwise return false so let's see if it works for this particular array it's returning true because we have a two next to a two just to test it let's eliminate this two now it should return false as there is no more two next to a two yes it's returning false so that's how can that's how we can find if a number is next to another number in a given array